The question has been asked to me, okay, so what has Dion Clark actually done to artists with the new story of uh, ABC7? Well, he's done a lot of things. Number one, he's exploited artists. Number two, he's, he's uh, misrepresentation is probably the first thing on the list. Number three, the, the morale of artists he has tampered with. So that's a bad combination when you have a show of fine art and you are working with artists. The show itself has had an evolution because it was the Harlem Fine Art Show. That means people had a genuine expectation that this was the best of the best. And at the early stages of the show, it's 10 years this year, um, they had the best of the best. And I talked about that in my other video, part one. His strategy is because he was losing established artists in droves to get as many up-and-coming, emerging, mid-career artists into the show. He's very successful at doing that because the uh, mid-career and emerging artists, they're dying to get a spotlight with the up-and-coming artists. So now if you've had a slew of top artists pull out and you figure a way to manipulate having at least enough top artists, marquee artists, to attract mid-career and emerging artists. That's still, it's the makeup of a lot of shows, but this is a preconceived strategy to keep his show alive. In his last year's show in New York City, he invited an African contingency from South Africa to take up at almost one-third of the show. 20 artists from the diaspora. Now, that already compensates for the mid-career art, I mean, the, the marquee artists that he lost. But now you got a show that's supposed to be billed as the fine art show that is now being twisted another direction because he has to find vendors to fulfill his, his agenda. And so the video I'm about to show you is an exit interview that I prepared from the Washington, D.C. show. Very, very specific. Um, as you listen to this video, and I hope you'll take time to listen to it, you'll hear a lot of things. I mean, when you hear the vulnerability of these artists, you'll hear the morality of these artists, you'll hear common themes of things that we required in order to do what we do. Um, but I'll give you a little bit more background information, too, about the show. Let's set the stage. The building that they selected for this show had dirt on the floor because the sixth floor had been demolished to do this. Uh, uh, and it was an open space to do the show. Outside, the building was beautiful. Inside, the building had just been demolished, and they really had a layer of demolished dirt on the floor. No one removed the, the dirt the whole period of the show, Okay. That means when he had his opening night where people came in who bought tickets, they were getting dirt on their shoes, the bottom of their pants legs. It was ridiculous because all you do is wipe the floor down. Okay? The other thing, too, is that they had light fixtures in the ceiling that were coming down. They had open and exposed uh, electrical boxes that were open. Okay? The walls were built around that structure. And the walls were different sizes. It had a nice layout. And, and you know... How hard is it to hang art? <laughs> you can hang art and you can make any space look great. But I'm talking about the bare essence of the show. If a person pays top dollar for a booth and they don't even know what they're walking into because this is a pop-up format show. Pop-up format means that their, their, their New York show is a stakeholder. That's their main show. But then they have D.C., Atlanta. They find buildings that will house the show. That's called a pop-up. You see that term being used readily nowadays. So that's the setup. So you got, they came, the building was not suited for us to move in. In other words, they had an alleyway that was probably big enough to hold um, one truck coming through. But suddenly, the setup, we had an influx of about 50 artists trying to get into the building at one time. And let's take into consideration, we got artists of all ages. We had some 70-year-olds. We had some, you know, that's where it becomes a problem. It was literally the most challenging move-in. Now, you might say, stop one, and artists, they, they got to do. No, that's part of the deal. When you hear the word logistics being used, that's what they're talking about, is that it really wasn't conducive for them to move in. They had a five-hour delay where they were kicked out of the building for security clearance for this building. 
Nobody knew about that clearance. Now, I give that certain things happen, certain things happen out of your control. But when you have a setup, people drove in from wherever they came from, they're setting up their booth, and then they get kicked out of the building for five hours. That's inconvenience on the artists. So I want to just give you a little bit more so you can have a better insight on what the artists have to deal with. If you are a new up-and-coming artist and you just got into the show and you see these big people over here, you're expecting some camaraderie. But if the artists that are, are upset because of the way the show is being managed, it's a problem. If your African contingency pulls out at the last minute because you screwed them over last year, and you only have one African artist that's being represented out of probably 20, now you got this whole space open that you need to fill the last minute. So what does Dion Clark do? He starts giving people double boost spaces, triple boost spaces. Now, if you paid for a double boost space and your, 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 your vendor next to you is being given an extra boost space, it causes a problem. Artists are not going to say anything because we're the most peaceful people on the planet when it comes to just getting the job done. But it causes a morale issue. If your African contingency now has this whole island of his work because you screwed up the deal last year, it's a problem. If you got artists that pay for a double boost space and they hear that you're giving space away free to other artists to fill space, and then a couple rows over, you charge them $150. You cause a camaraderie in that space and a morale in that space that professional artists don't deserve. Now, you had 60% professional artists in that show. There's probably a 40% in this show that probably weren't professional. I'm going to tell you what the difference is. Established artists know how the game is played. They've been doing it for a while. You're talking about the artists that have been doing 20, 30, 40 years. You got an artist that's been there one year. Now, I ain't going to talk about the talent level of these people because the talent level was, you know, we're some talented people. But now we're talking about the setup of the show. So you got a row of brand new people who, first year, you got them all squished together. They don't know what to expect. They're just so glad to be in the room with some of the larger marquee artists that they just stay enjoying the experience. When you hear the exit interview, you will hear that kind of enthusiasm being shared. I want you to look at their faces. I want you to feel their spirit. I want you to hear what they're actually going through, okay? And I asked them two questions, and it was an honest interview. What was the pluses and what were the negatives? Some people didn't want to complain because artists are like that, but I want you to listen to what they said because you'll get a lot of input on what really happens and how artists are affected by Dion Clark. And this is just one show. Now, as you look at the video, notice that the big guys like uh, uh, Leroy Campbell, Kevin Wack Williams, uh, um, Jonathan Romain, Frank Frazier, ENS Gallery, they're not at this show. See, they choose which shows they want to do. They have that right. They all got schedules. But I want you to look at how he's able to move around talent, you know. And I also was responsible for recruiting artists to do this show. So I know firsthand what the strategy was. The strategy is to elevate as many marquee name artists as you can. And then he will fill a space with whoever else. He partnered with another gentleman to plan the urban section. You'll hear that making being referenced in, in the uh, interview. Urban section was really a, a road that had a DJ uh, playing hip hop music, loud hip hop music all weekend and up and coming artists, emerging and up and coming artists that came in that first row. The second row got into, there was a couple of galleries there. There were a couple of seasoned artists there. And then as you move towards the front door, you got more towards the seasoned artists. Okay. And um, the talent in the show was fantastic, but the setup of the place uh, really had some problems. So listen to the interview. Please hear what they're saying. Take into consideration that they're being kind, and you'll get a better idea of how uh, Dion Clark affects artists. You know, if you are doing any basic show, one of the things that they provide readily is the space, tables, chairs, and a wastebasket. We literally had to argue over chair usage because he had trimmed back the budget on the tables and chairs. So they wanted to remain the chairs for the people that were coming to, to li listen to the presentations when artists need chairs to sit down for these long days, these, these three long days of the show. It's little details like that 
they have little to do with the staff of the Harlan Fine Arts show, but were the decisions being made by Dion Clark to trim back. He will trim back everywhere he can. The food ran out for the people who paid for tickets on the night of the uh, opening show. So they were taking, uh, stretching food out. It was a lot of stuff that was like, it affects the morale of the show, you know? And even though you'll hear artists saying it looked great, yeah, it looked great because it had fantastic art on the walls. But the, the site itself was below average. It was poor. He could have done a lot better selecting a building. The building was a problem. It was a logistical nightmare, to be honest. So I keep adding these little details because most people don't know what artists go through when they do these shows. You show up, you see the work on the walls. You don't even think about how it got there, how it got hung, how, and, 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 and the stories behind this. This is important stuff. The shows of Latter Day had that covered. Puck Building Show knew how to treat artists. The Philadelphia Fine Arts Show had to tre knew how to treat artists. Um, the Baltimore Show knew how to treat sh artists. The Cleveland Fine Arts Show knew how to treat artists. I can go through a list of shows that artists don't have to deal with the personality issues of D.R. Clark. This is setting the stage for why things need change. A lot of little things people don't think about when you're doing a show for artists. First thing is that most artists drive big, huge vans. So, you know, you got to have parking for vans. If you offer parking um, passes or validations for uh, parking and then your, your, the, the actual garage doesn't hold it. When I, I had a meeting, in one of their uh, meetings, I said, make sure the ceiling clearance on the garages being offered have more than a six foot seven clearance. That sounds like a blanket statement, but being an experienced artist that's traveled the, the country, I know that most people's vans are larger than that. My van was seven feet tall. So that means if you have slated parking and you don't have the ceiling height cover, you still got a parking problem. Little things that people really don't think about. Housing, come on, these guys came from all over the country. You haven't partnered with a housing partner? Okay, that's not, that's part of the artist signed on, but I'm just saying, come on. If this show is about artists, how come you can't take care of the artists? The night of the opening, they ran out of alcohol. So you got a, you got a sponsor that's doing alcohol, and you run out of alcohol on floors that are already dirty. It had a lot of problems, and each one of those problems affect artists. So let's be clear about what's getting ready to happen here. You're going to hear an interview about different experiences artists had after doing one of the shows in D.C., which is a secondary market pop-up show. And uh, you'll see artists that have been established in the business. You'll hear some from artists that this was their first show ever. Okay? Listen spiritually. My name is Jay Durant. I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I've been in the D.C. area since 1979. I currently live in Shepherd, Maryland. I've been a, um, a consistent artist since 2009. Prior to that, I was just, it was a hobby, pretty much. And um, this is my first time doing the Harlem Fine Arts Show. I didn't really know what to expect from the show. Um, I do know one of the challenges of doing an indoor show is getting, getting um, the proper foot traffic. And um, I generally do a lot of outdoor festivals where foot traffic is a lot greater and the sales are greater. So uh, I think they did a, a decent job in the marketing by hooking up with the radio station. And I thought it was also a good idea to, to do some honoring of some, like African Americans and um, technology and medicine that brought some, some potential buyers in. Um, but it, I mean, it's, been, it's still been a little slow for me compared to like out, outdoor shows. So I'm hoping the day will be a, a lot better. Peace and blessings in Assalamualaikum and Hotel. My name is Anthony Brooks Muhammad. I'm happy to be a part of the Harlem Arts Fine Arts Show here in Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm here today with my family. Uh, we are a family here in the art show, and we're excited to be invited into this venue today. This is our first time ever doing this particular show. So we are uh, extremely excited. I want to first thank the founder, Dion, uh, uh, for inviting us in, and Brother Poncho, who is an artist, who handled artist development, 
and the rest of the staff. Uh, we look forward to uh, being a part of this as it travels across the United States. We're hoping to be a part of the show in, um, in New York in February. And uh, we're just so excited uh, about all the creative energy that, and the other artists that we've had a chance to be a part of. And I believe that this is excellent for all the artists uh, who may engage in this particular project as it's traveling. So uh, please try to make contact and come out anytime it comes into your area. Please come out and support the Black Arts. Again, thank you again. Uh, again, peace and blessings. My name is Letitia Muhammad, and I'm an artist here at the show. And I really enjoy the part of getting to know new people in different avenues when it comes to art, meaning the different artists that we bond with, and also the participants that come from different walks of life. You get to meet them. And um, I think one thing I would like to see more of is the introduction of the artist so people can know who they are and what they do. And I do see that a little bit. I do see that, but I think a little bit more. I'm not one who likes to be put in the forefront, but I still think that's an important thing. And I also um, would like maybe um, make some workshops or something, or maybe if not a workshop, something that suggests things for artists to do that can help them to um, get their art out there. But overall, I think it was really good. This was a good experience for me. Um, it was my daughter, myself, my husband, so they really helped us and encouraged us to do the show, you know, and then provide certain things for us and expanded our space because there's three people with three different arts. So that right there, I'm forever grateful for. Tim Giles, I'm from Suffolk, Virginia, but I live in Dunford, Virginia. Uh, spent about 20 years overseas as a diplomat, and now I'm back here doing my art. I like the show. I really like the show. I came out here. This my I've done one in Chicago, the one in New York, and the one here. I really like it. Uh, the venue. One of the things I think we can improve upon is just uh, helping the artists offload and set up their stuff a little bit more easy. But otherwise, the venue is nice. Hello, my name is Roger James. I'm a visual artist from Riverdale, Maryland. I specialize in oil portraits and children's books, and especially dealing with like celebs or just famous uh, iconic people. Uh, let's see, I mean, this is my first time doing Harlem Fine Arts uh, show. Right now it's going pretty well. I sold out 13 or so books that I bought. I sold some prints, and I still have some originals that are still available for purchase. And, um, you know, Today should be a good day since it's kind of hot and you know, hopefully for the best. In terms of um, what I would like to see in the show, I, I would like to see probably the show extend a little bit more because there are a lot of uh, talented artists and I think a lot of people would really appreciate the work if they had more time to scope their, uh, all the different, different artists in the area. My name is Marlon De La Zulu. Um, this is my first time exhibiting here at the Harlem Fine Arts Show. Uh, so far, everything has been great. I mean, many people coming through, everybody having a good time, people buying art. Um, one of the things that I think that they could improve upon, um, to be honest with you, I'm not quite sure on that. Because this is my first time doing this, and this being my first time here, you know, I have to wait and then process everything, and then that way I can come back and, you know, be able to answer that one. My name is Roderick Vines. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, obviously I'm an artist, and I am being interviewed by my good friend Poncho. <laughs> Tell me your overviews of the show. Well, overviews of this show, uh, I believe it's real good. The reason that I do is because now there's young artists coming in that need to have their exposure. There's South African artists that have come in and we need to be exposed to their views and their attitudes uh, about America and about where they're from and to take a look at uh, the how their environment had influenced them 
And so uh, I think there's a cross-section of, of very, very, very good uh, of things that we can take in and take home with us to help us grow. What would you like to see change? Uh, improvements. Well, uh, <laughs> hey, now, now let me get down to the, to, to the uh, very crux of, of what I think the artists are uh, concerned about is that the improvements of coming in the shows and making it so much easier for artists, and I think that's uh, uh, just a matter of uh, uh, neglect, just mild neglect, and uh, the artists are going to have to make sure that their uh, setup and breakdown is a whole lot easier. And I'm, I'm not really sure that I'm fully answering the question, but that really is the first thing that comes to mind. It needs to be easier for the artists, and I think that during the exhibitions, that they will have a much more relaxed mind because you know we need as artists to be able to project to uh, our audiences, our viewers, our patrons that uh, you know the, the the love that artists have for their work and the actual love that they have for their patrons and viewers. I don't think that's expressed enough, but uh, we really and truly as artists really appreciate, because I have these conversations all the time with artists, we really and truly appreciate the viewers, the comments, the, the, the patronage for all these years. I've been an artist all of my life. I'm 68 years old. I've been exhibiting professionally for at least 40 years. And our people, people of color, have supported me. I mean, I can't even begin to think uh, the people of color that have supported me to give me the kind of lifestyle that they may not they may not be happy on their jobs, but they have afforded me to be happy in my vocation. Good morning. This is Lashawn Bill from Houston, Texas. I'm here at the Hall of Fine Arts Show in D.C. This has been an interesting experience for me. This is my first time here, and. Uh, Overall, I gotta say it's pretty much a positive thing. My drawbacks to me was basically some of the logistics, parking. Uh, you know, loading is always an issue in most most venues, but still an issue nevertheless. And um, those are probably my most key points to it. I think the promoters did a pretty good job of uh, having the various kind of activities going on to help cultivate the art and get people in the building. I thought that was really good. Um, a lot of positive energy, a lot of great artwork. That's the main thing that I've heard from most people that came here. They were like overwhelmed by the amount of the great art that was here. So that's a plus. Also must state that the up and coming artists are doing some very positive things here. Their energy level is way, way up high. And they're doing some creative things. They're painting on locations. They have the DJ back there jamming with them and everything. They're serving alcohol to their people. All these kind of things make a difference when you're trying to like cultivate your clientele. And they seem to be very much on point on that. So kudos, kudos to them, uh, more so than anything else. Hi, my name is Clifford Lang. Um, I'm an oil painter from uh, New York originally, but I'm now down here in the D.C. area. Um, this is my second time doing a show with the Hall of Marks. Uh, my first time was D in D.C. two years ago, and I figured they were coming back, so I'll give them another chance to see how it turns out. Um, I think the show is a real good opportunity, for, especially for black artists, to really get together and not only sell art, but also network and uh, change experiences. My first year when I did the Harlem March show, I was a fresh artist. Um, I learned a lot from the brothers that, that really took me in and kind of helped me step to that next level. This year, coming back, um, I had an opportunity to meet some brothers that were doing it for the first time. And it was my turn to turn around and give them couple of words of encouragement, some tips, some ideas, as well as still learn from some of the older cats. They had a lot of good, you know, feedback and stuff like that to get me, keep me going. Um, as far as the Harlem Mark show, 
this year is a beautiful thing. I think the one thing I feel like they can really improve on is promoting the artists themselves a little bit better. Um, just make sure the art, artists are tagged and all the uh, social media uh, posts and everything like that so that people can really follow that artist, follow their career and see where that artist goes after the show. So, once again, I really uh, I enjoyed my time here and hopefully I can do another show with the Harlem Art Show and, you know, be one of those senior brothers. <laughs> so, thanks. Robinson. I'm a visual artist here at the Harlem Fine Arts show and um, this is my first time here. I'm originally from New Orleans but live in Fort Washington now. So I really enjoyed this. This is my, like I said, my first time here at the Harlem Fine Arts show. Um, I really enjoyed the people that came through. Would love to see a little bit more traffic. Um, I don't, I don't know if it wasn't advertised enough, uh, but I think that the artists uh, maybe be able to push it a little bit more or whoever is running it can push it a little bit more so that we can get more traffic so that all the artists can be successful in selling their art. Um, I know it's really tough out here as an artist, so um, it's encouraging when we have people coming through and wanting to buy all the different types of art there is there because there's so much and um, yeah so but I really enjoyed the camaraderie, camaraderie and just being amongst my other fellow artists was in, very encouraging and um, I would love to do it again uh, I think maybe perhaps I don't know um, having it in a different venue uh, that is more accessible to the, uh, the people that are coming through, I think it would be a, a lot better and successful. Hi, my name is Joy Lyons. I'm from the Atlanta area. Uh, this is my first show, and it's been a very wonderful experience for me. I think one of the things that I have truly enjoyed is meeting the other artists here and finding how helpful they are with sharing not only techniques but you know business kinds of uh, information things it just really kind of very helpful so i was very happy about that i think one of the greatest challenges i had was initially with this um logistical kind of things you know um setting up i mean it was really hard on wednesday getting here and also a little disappointed because we didn't have the students that got here early and some things that's just falling through the cracks and I know that you don't have um, control over everything, you know, uh, like the parade yesterday, or I mean the, whatever, the events yesterday that stopped the traffic. But overall, this has been a very wonderful experience for me. I mean, I didn't break the bank financially, but I made a lot of contacts. Um, I gained a lot of confidence about my work uh, because I got a lot of really, really good compliments. And uh, so overall, this has been a wonderful experience. I think I would work on the logistical kind of things because they really can create problems for people who are new, you know? Um, other than that, I am very happy to be here. All right. Hi, this is DJ Jazzy Joyce. Um, I'm here at the Harlem Fine Arts Show. Did I miss the letter here? Harlem Fine Arts Show, right? Yeah. H-F-A-S. Branding. Anyway. Um, it's my first time as an artist, and my experience was amazing. The only thing, the first time as a visual artist, the only thing that I wish is that maybe there was more awareness built for everything. There's ways that you can, just like when me being in the music industry, understanding how to promote and a one one artist. So there's certain components that could be lent to the promotions of the operation that would just bring more awareness. Imagine, okay, they said there's 80 artists, not only on the establishment that's um, putting together this production, artists learn the importance of um, how 
social media works, how hashtags work, the value of it, the, the value of the consistency of those things. Art is not only corporation, because if, if it's 80 of us as an artist saying the same thing about this one entity that's supporting us, hello, yo, 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 that's 80 people saying the same yo, 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 and then maybe people from yo, 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 get two, three people come, then yo, 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 two, three people come, then yo, yo, hello, so understand it, understand it, the importance of tagging, if you don't understand it, read up on it. Google. You, you, if you can Google to get a pair of shoes or whatever, Google so we can all help each other. I'm out. Peace. I got stuff to do. Hi there. My name is Alfred Ado. I was born in Ghana and uh, lived and grew up in Ghana. Did a lot of my work in Ghana and uh, settled in South Africa in the year 2002. In South Africa, I've done a lot of work in South Africa for... A lot of companies, my work has grown very well in South Africa and uh, that's been my base and that's been where my studio is. Uh, it's got a lot of market for me in terms of uh, uh, the size of the economy which has been helpful a lot. So I, I've been working from there for quite some time. My speciality is sculpture pieces which I really enjoy very much. The art of recycling, I call it, because uh, I recycle sawdust and uh, I use uh, special resins to bolt it, to actually bind them together and sculpt the pieces in the process. You know, I, cause, I also call say sawdust to go because what people don't want as a sawdust is what I tend to go for them. So people don't want a sawdust, but I think they like the gold. So yeah, I think that sometimes not valuable, make something valuable to keep people the stories that uh, I portray. I'm interested in people. I get inspired by different cultures all around. My advantage of living in many places in Africa and enjoying a lot of cultural experiences gives me you know, a lot of content to be able to show the world what life forms of African people, no matter where they come from, I try to propagate and be an ambassador of the life forms to the rest of the world. As I travel, I travel with the rich cultural experience and I engage with these experiences with the fellow brothers and sisters that we meet in the, in the diaspora. The Highland Miles Fine Show has been a great vehicle to meet this, to achieve this, because it gives us the opportunity to meet, you know, a lot of African Americans who also want to get in touch with their roots. So we give them that, that, that connection. And the Highland Financial travels from city to city. I was fortunate to have been invited to the show in New York at Riverside Church, wonderful experience I had over there. And uh, had a lot, of, uh, a lot of clients that really enjoyed the work. We made some good sales, but most important is the connection and, and the rich enjoyment that people get from acquiring a piece and what it means to them, you know. It's very, very amazing. And uh, we tried this, it's been wonderful to the last day. And so far it's been going very well. Looking forward to the next show in Martha's Vineyard in August and I'm sure that's going to be a very fantastic show. So I want to say congratulations to the Harlem Final Show. Keep whatever they're doing, doing very well. If there's one thing that I would say they could improve on, it's going to be difficult, it's doing such a great show already. I think uh, more publicity will be good in terms of advertisement, you know, getting people to know that it is really happening around the local community should really know and get involved because they, they have a very, very unique product that I've not seen anyone have in this brand. I think a lot more needs to be done in the publicity to let people know. Because a lot of people out there would love to be part of this show. So I think if the publicity is done uh, to a little bit more extensive, I think it will, it will, it will be perfect. Thank you very much. For, for, for everything that's What's going on world? I'm Wendell Supreme Shannon from Baltimore, Maryland. This is my first time participating in the Harlem Fine Art Show. Uh, so far I've loved it. Uh, positive overviews of the show. Positive overviews from the show. I've met curators, I've met clientele that met the price point that I felt like my art was worth. I've obtained networking 
possibilities that I couldn't have done in other venues. And um, the sky's the limit after that. <laughs> Areas of improvement. Areas of improvement for myself. The show. Okay. Areas of improvement for the show, I would say marketing to get a little bit better foot traffic, logistics for loading and unloading of the artwork, I'd say the clean, cleanliness of the space regarding the floors and the display walls. Information being passed down the ladder from the higher command from the venue to the founder to the coordinators to the artist. It was a slow process which I felt as though slowed down my ability to effectively bring in my crowd based off of what I know my crowd is able to afford you know, regarding ticket and entrance fees. Oh, parking. So that would also go with venue information uh, being passed down the ladder because there was no parking validation for any of the days, although we were told that two of the days would be validated. Each day we got to the parking garage, no validation happened. We just incurred a lot of additional fees to the fee that was a part of the show without notice. Other than that, I had a phenomenal time with the show. The name is Jerry Prettyman. I'm an artist from Baltimore. Uh, I'm here at the Fine Art Festival in D.C. Uh, I met a lot of good artists here. And, uh, there's some that, uh, it's, it's a range of artists. Uh, to be honest, you have some really high-end art and you have some art that uh, could use a little bit more expertise. But overall, I think it's a, it's a quality event. The event, uh, I don't want to go into great details and some other aspects of it. I think, generally speaking, overall, I think it's a, it's a, it's a positive event. And uh, I'm glad to be here. And, uh, uh, I'm not sure what else to go with this. But <laughs> Areas of improvement. Areas improvement, I think the logistics of how this is set up is extremely poorly done. They could have done a, a hell of a lot better job. The response to the, some of the inquiries that I had was my, you know, from the load in, from vouchers to hotel accommodations, uh, you know, you, you know unpack that whole. Something as simple as baskets to put your refuse in instead of somebody else's space and trying to grab another place to put it. I mean, a, lot, a lot of little logistics that uh, needed a whole lot of. Uh, I'm surprised that the logistics were, were a big issue for me. Um, I hope that this gets, uh, gets resolved. I think in the future it could present a lot of problems. For artists such as myself, I can't speak for artists. I, I, I'm not speaking for artists. I'm speaking for people. Well, let, let us know exactly what you mean, Jerry, because I know there's uh, some physical issues that need to be addressed. There's some health issues that need to be addressed, and a lot of times when artists do these shows, we don't get an opportunity to really share okay. from, from different aspects. So that's really important. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um, you know, for an example, well, uh, something like like parking vouchers. If you put down it in your package there will be car parking vouchers available. I expect to have parking vouchers available. That's all. That's all. Don't 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 let me come here and say, well, we didn't get the vouchers, but we'll give you a discount on Wednesdays, Fridays, or whatever the issue is. If you have them, you have them. If you don't, you don't. If you're going to provide them and you can't, don't put it down in writing. Don't don't have me expecting the vouchers. Don't have me expecting you know you, you know hotel accommodations i expect hotel you know some some kind of relationship if you don't have a relationship with the hotels please don't don't leave me hanging that's all i'm saying don't leave me hanging don't have me drive driving back and forth you know like some teenager or whatever the situation might be just just do whatever you have in the packet whatever you say you're going to do just follow through with it and i'm fine with it you know i can live with it one way or another if you can do it fine please let me know but if, you, if i expect it if it's in writing and you 
don't come back to, to honor what you say you're going to do, it's a problem. I don't expect a refund from you. I, I tell you, there's another vibe that I'm getting with this whole process. You know, I, I, I kind of, I, I don't want to be totally negative. But I think as long as this, this, this whole in front of the festival has been in existence, these kind of things cannot, they won't exist for me. I, I, I can't speak for other artists. They, they have their own situation. But for me, as an older person, with certain expectations, I think even the young guys, they, they, they do a certain amount of respect in terms of professionalism. It's promoted as a, as a, as a fine art exhibit. You know, and ha you know. Just stick to it. Stick to the professionals. Stick to what you put down on paper. That's all I really ask. Uh, you know, and I expect glitches here and there. That's that's going to happen. But but across the board, you can't you can't load in and have problems all day. And you come back the next day and you got problems. And you know you can't have an artist that's been around for 40, 50 years. And, you know, setting up to somebody that's come out for the first time. You can't have an artist spending twelve, fifteen hundred, a thousand dollars, another artist spending one hundred and fifty bucks. It does not work. If you're gonna if you're gonna put it out as a festival, pay your money, this is your fee, fine. You can't have somebody spending that kind of money with certain expectations, certain expectations in terms of art and professionalism kind of organizations run. If you're not gonna do it, just simply don't do it. Don't promote it that way. Just just let it go. Just you know, art festival, black art festival. $500,000, you can do it, you can do it, you can't, you can't. That's, that's all I really ask. Just be professional and honor what you say. And this, this particular event, uh, in terms of follow-up, I'll give you an example. I asked about, about the parking vouchers. I mean, I'm, I'm spending, a, for me, for my budget, I'm spending a good, for me, it's a good amount of money. We offer parking vouchers, and I ask you about the fact that why we're not getting the parking vouchers. vouchers. And you tell me, well, you pay me X amount of dollars, and you'll get $15 off on Sundays and Saturdays. Uh, you know, uh, so, some kind of nondescript, some kind of non-response to, to an issue. Because all the money adds up, and at the end of the day, I, I, I put out a lot of money. And one of the reasons, I, 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 I'll be perfectly honest, the only reason I did this show was because I got referred to it by Poncho Brown. Other than that, I had no desire to do a Holland Fun Us Festival at all. That was not on my agenda. I didn't want to do it. And But I'm here. And while I'm here, I've seen more response and more helpfulness, more inclusiveness in terms of how to get things done and where to put things and here's your signs, here's this, here's that, you need lighting. I've got more response from that from, from Poncho than I have from the community. I don't even know who, you know, I mean, all I get from, I couldn't even get a table. I had a, I had a four foot table reserved. I asked for the table. The tables didn't come in, you'll get them to bar. So on the day of set up, couldn't set up. Couldn't set up. Just sitting out and sit in a restaurant for an hour, come back from the restaurant, another three hours. FBI scan or search, whatever that is. So I'm out of the building for four hours. You know, even the stuff that's out of your control, if you handle your stuff and manage your stuff properly, it won't be a big issue. Some things are going to pop up. Some things are out of your control. Everybody, I understand that. I'm not going to speak right now. I understand that. And I can accept that. But at the end of the day, you just kind of like, well, it'll be okay. Or, you know, just like with the tables, you know. No tables. It was like I, I, I forgot her name. I think her name was Deborah. I said, somebody, somebody said, go see Deborah. I said, okay. I saw Deborah. She said, well, uh, I, I had reserved a four foot table. Oh, let me go find somebody to help me locate the four foot table. She never found somebody. I asked her, and I got some kind of nebulous saying. So the bottom line was that they didn't take. So I brought my own table. I brought my own table. Then once I got here, a six foot table, which was plenty of plenty, plenty available, a six foot table would accommodate me better than a four foot table. Bottom line was they didn't have the four foot table out of reserve. That's all I'm saying. If you say you're gonna reserve a four foot table, you have a four foot table. Don't have it the day after uh, I'm setting up and you know I'm here to 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night trying to 
get set up and, and, and still not completely set up because of your, uh, I'm gonna say it, because of your incompetence. If I were a teacher, I gave my students a project, my middle school kids a project, to put an event like this together, I'm sure they would have done a better job, period. That's how I really feel. Case closed, I'm done. I'm done. I, I, yeah, I, I, and I'm not even going to get to the hotel and logistics and all that, all the fiasco that went behind that. I end up driving back and forth to Baltimore anyway. Uh, you know, if, if I were putting on an event, I would do everything I could to accommodate the artists. You can't, you can't keep making the artists that make the video the brunt of all that. You know, I have artists come up to me whining and complaining. You know, and it's quite a few. And I have, I haven't, I haven't even gone in that direction. I have my issues. I try to keep it to myself, but you know, they express very similar issues. Basically, basically issues about these blue spaces. You know, I, I thought the blue spaces were one thing. Turns out there's some other options with this blue space. And if you put it up front and I knew about it, okay, it's not an issue. But if I don't know about it, some other things are going on. I, Maybe somebody else you can interview will tell you some of their details, but I don't, I don't want to say the wrong thing that I'm not 100% sure about. Some of the things that I do know about are very unprofessional. And I think if you're going to run it as a professional artist, so-called professional artist, and again, you can't have somebody working in a, in a video for 50 years with a major track record, a major resume sitting across from somebody that's just starting out, it's not fair to the artist. It's not fair to the class that, that I know I invited some people and, and they had certain expectations. They didn't know it was going to be a, 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 a giant arts game. They didn't know that. They thought it was going to be another situation. That affects me. And I can't talk about all that. That affects me. You know, I, I, you know, I'm not the most well-known artist in the world, but I, I do have a track record. I do have collectors that collect my work. You know, I, I, I do have some galleries that collect my work. It affects me as an artist. So if I have some, and I, and I had a couple people coming down from, from New York. They're coming down, they're like, oh, this is like arts game. <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm sitting up there like an idiot, you know, telling them one thing, you know, you get another product. And it was professionally not run. I mean, just the, the existence of them getting in, uh, the, 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 the go-kart race, what they had. There's no way, there's no way in the world they're gonna mark off as much space as they did for this go-kart race. And you didn't know anything about it. I refused to believe it. I absolutely refused to believe it. I had to move my car. It took me another hour to get, find some space to, just to get in. As I'm parking, I run into some other, other exhibitors. They're having the same problem. One woman ended up in Arlington. She was riding around for two hours, made the wrong turn, ended up in Arlington. You know, and it's, 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 it's to me, it's your responsibility. I'm not going to put it on anybody else. Well, you made the wrong turn. No. It's your responsibility, you know. And I got GPS and still got turned around. You know, GPS is going crazy. You know, that's your responsibility. That's on you. That's on you. And for me, I'm done. I'm done. Point blank, I'm done. You know, I want to. I want to be. Uh, there's some positive aspects. Uh, you know, I try to be positive. I, I am positive. I am positive. I'm just expressing. Uh, negative aspects that I think need to be addressed. And I don't know, that's it. Hi, my name is Greta Chapin McGill. This is my first time doing the Harlem Fine Arts Show. And I wanted it to be a great experience for me. I heard so much about this uh, venue. So I just would like to say that overall, I had a very pleasant experience. The only thing that I will say that can be approved improved upon is I think that more thought needs to be taken as to where the artists are placed and how they are placed. Um, I think that the type of work that they do should all be in one area. This way, uh, clients would be able to find you. you wouldn't, I just found that there was so much noise and so much music going on, I really couldn't talk to my clients the way I wanted to talk to them. So that I would improve upon. I would try really hard to put life art together. So overall, it was a good experience, but that's just one little small thing I did.
Thank you. Ready? Hi, I'm Stuart McLean. I live in New Orleans, Louisiana. I have a gal. I'm Stuart. My name is Stuart McLean. I live in New Orleans, Louisiana. I own a gallery and a gift shop in New Orleans. I am here at the Harlem Financial Show in Washington, D.C. It's a nice show, very nice show. There are a lot that we can do to all together um, help the show and grow. I've been doing the show since the inception. I started doing the show when it started in New York in the, in the Armory, and I have been away from the show for a few years. But it's my first time back in maybe four years, three or four years, and it's, it's, it's okay. Um, a little more organization, a little more organization. Um, um, uh, personally, we uh, organization will help all the way around from bringing the show to, from from the park into the to the to the setup. To the, you know, I, 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 one of the things that we shouldn't have to wait um, five hours to continue setting up a show. It should have been planned differently. Where we knew that if we had to get out by four o'clock. We would do what we needed to do on the R54 if they were going to have that. Um, the bill, I spoke to a couple of the building people. They knew that. If, I spoke to a couple of the, the, the security in the building. They knew they were coming, so they could have conveyed that. that they could have found that out, so it would move a lot smoother. Um, the the layout for the show. Um, there's certain things like the front should be very appealing when you walk through the. It should be a lot more appealing when you walk through the door. The, 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 the people with the vases and had done vases in South Africa, that was very beautiful. And But you know, it looks, after that, right next to it, you have somebody with, with, with work. On it. It, it needs to be more organized, you know, some flowers, a, a signing book, or a signing that people are not signing it. I spoke to Dion, he said that um, everybody's supposed to sign it, then nobody's doing it. But nobody's telling them, you know, you can sign in here. And that's good for you all, for business, for the artists. That brings more people back to the show, let them know about the show. So we need that. I need. I think they need to work a lot more with people like Poncho and artists that are really interested in the people, in the artists in general also. So that's very important to what we do. Um, he's a people and he's an artist person. So he thinks about himself us and himself also a lot more than most people think about us because he's he's in that realm he's in he's doing what we do and he understands the trials and tribulations the good and the bad that we go through so um i think they should work um, more hand in hand with us and let us get let let us give them some input on what needs to be changed and what could be changed to help better the show overall and it will also help us as artists because we want to be successful we don't want to do a show and not be successful we're not going to be back so this is if we're successful th that means they're successful also and so that's very important to what we do how you doing my name is victor montague uh this is my first year at the harlem fine arts festival um i was i'm uptown born downtown living right now uh this this uh, was a great opportunity. I really had a chance to kind of connect with a bunch of artists that I I follow on Instagram or I follow their work, and it kind of was an opportunity that I was given to be able to ask how to start paintings and not feel so discouraged when I was doing them. Um, the one thing that I feel like I would have benefited me a little bit more is. Because the space is so big, and because it's such a melting pot of new artists and older artists, your eyes can get a little big, and it's kind of hard to um, know what's right and what's wrong in a sense. So I think one thing I would probably suggest maybe is if they had like maybe a buddy system, not a buddy system, but because artists like to meet different people, I feel like it would have been a great opportunity for maybe an elder artist or an artist that's been doing it for a while to have a, a designated aspiring artist kind of that he could just check in check in on and see how it was going just to kind of um, give them a few 
focal points to work on to benefit their their art and their business or however they want to kind of go about showing their work and I feel like me being not the most talkative person it was a little bit of an extra step I was blessed that I had people come up and talk to me and kind of ask and get into my head but me personally it it would have been a little more difficult if that didn't happen to kind of get engaged with artists I felt who had a little more tenure than me. So that would probably be my one suggestion. But other than that, this, was, this I can't ask for anything better. Experience to show my art is all I can ask after working and taking my time on it. So I just appreciate it. How you doing? My name is Eric Walton, director of Walton Gallery in Petersburg, Virginia. Uh, been open about seven years, been in the art business all my life. Um, we are a, a contemporary, abstract, I would say mainly abstract type of gallery. Uh, trying to do our part in the art scene, definitely in the Mid-Atlantic. And you know, I'm here with my uh, good friend Pancho Brad. And I'm here at the Harlem Fine Arts, what is it, Fine Arts Show. Um, I would say the art fair is a great place in terms of bringing people together to promote black art, which is on definitely on the rise. And uh, I hope you guys, well, I won't say that. <laughs> what questions would you have? Just tell me a positive overview of what you've seen in the show. The positive overview. And there's some areas where you think it can be improved. The positive overview, once again, is uh, them bringing a group of black artists together to promote black art. Um, and I would also say, I think the promotions of the show was spot on. You know. But in terms of the artist side, I would say uh, it, it lacked organization, to be honest. Uh, they have, without, in any art fair, without art, there is no fair. So without organization of the art, there is no fair. You know, and um, I just think it was, the organization was definitely the downfall here. Um, I do believe that they need to kind of, it, it, it had a, a more of an art market feel than a fine art feel. Um, when you start putting out applications for artists and asking them to submit their work, I'm thinking that you're picking work, not just letting people pay a paycheck and taking the money for the booths, you know, because, and then, you know, once people get here, people talk. And when you have people paying $1,000, $1,200 for a booth, and then it's nothing wrong with discounting a booth to a person, but when you give them away for 150 bucks, when the person next to you paid a thousand dollars, it starts to make it feel like you've been beat. You know that uh, there's a lot of sh hustling going on here. So I mean, uh, organization. And remember, artists do talk. So when you give away, when you start to do things, remember, as they always say, the truth comes to light. And I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and bash on the, uh, the management of who put this together because they did do a solid thing because they are trying to help and promote black art. You know, I, hey, kudos and hats off. But still, there is a level of excellency that we must keep because guess what? I mean, I'm not going to toot my horn or, or because, I mean, but a lot of the people, a lot of my collectors are in the D.C. area and came through here. And I'll give a story. 
I'll use one story that uh, on the urban section row, uh, they're up and coming, and um, everybody needs a start. But when you have it, when you're gonna call it fine arts, people are expecting a certain level. So when you have collectors walking through here and their husband sees something and then he says, hey honey, come over here and check out the art. And she says, I'm not going over there to look at that shit. And the other artists are about to, they sitting there and they like, did this lady just say that? And they're offended and they're about to go beat the lady up. So it's like, you really gotta figure out what level of an art fair you want to be at. Do you want to be a fine art fair, or do you want to be a flea market? And I mean, I'm going. I think that's all I need to say. Fine art or flea market? Because you have the brand. The, the name is out there as a brand. You just gotta bring the art. You gotta bring the art. And relationships with artists is everything in this business. Because once again, if you don't have the relationships with the artist, you don't have the art. And that means you cannot have a quality art fair. Remember, this is a traveling art fair. Traveling. Every place that you go to, I know the artists in that because I represent some of them. So when they start saying, hey, uh, you know, um, you know, so, uh, uh, Harlem Fine Art Show is coming to my area. You know, what's up? What, what do you know about it? You know, just like I had to do for you. And I'm going to keep it 100. The brand, people said good things about the brand, but the management, a lot of people had a lot of negative things to say. But since you kept asking me for like the last two or three years, I said, you know what? I got to I gotta find out myself. And now I found out myself. And you know the answer to that is no Martha's Vineyard for me. You know, until until you get it right. I'm gonna be honest. Until this is right. Because the, I mean once again I'm gonna keep it honest again. When people come to you and this is your event, you can't sit there with the look of a deer in the headlights look when I'm asking you a question and somebody else is asking you a question related to this event and you say well uh, you got to speak to this person then the next person says well you got to speak to that person you should have the answers organization just get the organization right and you might have people come back to you because once again people talk and I thank you for this interview. Dr. Yamona Smalls, and I am from Baltimore, Maryland. This is my second Harlem Fine Arts show. My first one was in Harlem, and my second one is here in Baltimore. Um, I am having a really good day today. Sold quite a few pieces, which is exciting. Um, there's a few things that I would say work really, really well. I love that we had good lighting. Um, the boot size was wonderful this time. Um, and I think some of the challenges are just some organization. Um, wasn't uh, I didn't realize that I wouldn't have electricity in my booth, so I had to find other places to plug in. Um, and some of the communication around parking, um, just loading and unloading was a little bit rocky. Um, but this time, I, you know, was able to make do because I had additional help. Um, again, I really love the publicity this time. I'm hearing people heard about it from the radio. Um, from Facebook, uh, where else? The radio, Facebook, and TV, which was awesome. Several people said that, which really means that the advertising went out in a really public way. Good, good news. I love the videos and the graphic design promotion that went out on Facebook. I know Poncho helped out significantly with that. Um, but that was a really big plus because it made it easier to post and, uh, and get information out um, to people who are interested in attending. So that's a real positive. Um, the hard part is always that you put money out and you expect to see more foot traffic. And you can't be guaranteed that just because someone walks past your booth is going to result in a sale. But we just want to have more foot traffic. So 
how do we connect with people that are clearly interested in buying? Are we reaching out to gallery owners? Are we reaching out to organizations that have students? I really, really, really wanted to see the kids. So um, for the second time, not being able to see kids at a show was kind of frustrating because it's one of my areas of passion. So that's something I just would want to say. We should know if there's a, if that school's out on the day or that there's a major holiday like in New York that it was um, Chinese New Year. So those kind of things we just have to look into on the front end. One other thing, and I know I'm giving a little critique here, the sound system was kind of messed up when we did the um, medic, uh, the, the physicians and the, the IT piece. And so we really wanted to hear that. In fact, my father just called me this morning and said, how can I get the information on the doctors that presented? Because they were really interested in the research they talked about. So we got to make sure that sound system is right if that's the system we're going to use. So outside of that, again, very personable. The team here, the publicity team, Dion, uh, Cordelia, everybody that was involved. Very, very positive energy, and I think that really worked really well for me. And um, we're very direct in communicating concerns. I really appreciate that flexibility of the team. So that's me. That's it. I think that's good. My artist name is Nikki Levy. I'm from Washington, D.C. This is my first time at the Harlem Art Spine Art Show. Um, I thought it was a wonderful experience to be in the same space with artists that I've heard of and I have been following for years. I mean, the best of the game. And then to even see the newbies of the game, like me, um, who have had a chance to just share space with art lovers and, and, and the ones that we admire. So I thought it was a very good experience. Um, I learned a lot. I had a chance to see so many different uh, types of art. I've had a chance to see so many different types of media. Um, it's just been a wonderful experience networking, and I look forward to the next show. Um, as far as any issues that I've had, the only issue that I've had was uh, yesterday, which was Saturday. There was um, an issue with parking because DC closed off a few roads. Um, during install, um, I had an issue with getting into the loading dock area because of congestion and maybe the building wasn't prepared for how many artists were really coming to take over the sixth floor. But uh, other than that, I think everything went well. It, it's just a really great experience and I'm humbled and honored to be a part of it. Hi, my name is Thomas Lockhart. I'm from Colorado. My name is Thomas Lockhart. I'm from Denver, Colorado. Uh, came to the show. Um, actually, I learned about the show through uh, Larry uh, Puncho Brown through one of his emails that he sent out. And I remember hearing about the show some years ago, and I was very interested in wanting to be a part of it. So I, I took the time and uh, invested, and also uh, did some research on the, on the, the show and decided to get in. Involved, and I was very happy that they selected me. So this is my first year at the show. I may have had some pieces through someone else's contact in the shows previously, but this is the first time me represented myself. So I'm happy to be here. There are a lot of wonderful artists, you know, and a lot of designs that I see that uh, are pretty significant. Um, different things that I would say about the show. Um, I'm always looking for people for serious buyers. You know, and I know it's a big demographic type of thing that you have to do in your research and looking for the people of what they're looking for and being able to target them specifically so they can um, find what they're looking for. So that's that's a big thing. I think that's one of the things that they can um, maybe advance on and look to gain from uh, the exposure. I think it's a really well put together show. I love the... Uh, the, the 44 page uh, digital booklet that I got and the advertising because I was a little worried about how, how much they were going to advertise. Some shows say they do that and then they fall short and then you're not getting people to show up. You got a lot of looky loos and that's not what we need as artists. You know, we do this for a living. You know,
know, and I just started doing this full time last year, and I want to keep on doing it. And uh, learning from some of these other artists has been very invaluable. Um, I've uh, been following Larry for for quite a while, for many years, and just listening to some of his his interviews and his insight, and it's been very helpful for me, for myself, and my growth. So uh, thank you so much for your time, and appreciate it, and the honor to be here believe that the show can be an amazing, tremendous show, especially for us of color. You know, it's very important to, for us to be able to get out there and see the importance of what we can bring to so many other cultures.